Once again, we're trying to copy the Doodle Jump game and create the code that they used. And in this video, we're going to create the bullet action of the bullet going up the screen. So eventually we'll create the action for the character to shoot the bullet. But right now we're just creating the action of the bullet moving up the screen to make contact with a monster or to just go off the screen altogether because they missed the monster. Yeah, and the shoot function is super important because sometimes there will be an obstacle that you can't get past unless you destroy the monster in your way. Alright, before we get started and show you how to put the shooting action on our character, there is some code that we need to remove, and that goes to the game controller. It's in it's the code, some of the code we put in the game controller. Let's pop that window open. And as you can see here, we commented a section of the code out that we didn't need. This code is what spawns the character into the game. And we aren't going to have him spawn into the game. We're just going to have him already be there when the game level loads. And this will make it easier for us to put the action, uh, the shooting action, onto our character. I use two different types of comment tags here. You can see the different ones, two, the double backslash or the one backslash with, with an asterisk. All right, so once we have that commented out, we can also go to the hierarchy and delete the spawn point. Since our due to jump character is not going to spawn in, we can delete the spawn point. And let's go to prefab and drag our box dude into the scene. Let's, let's move him down, position him right above the platform. And we're going to need to drag him onto the game controller since we removed some since we removed the spawn thing, we need to actually drag this new box dude into the box dude section right here. All right, now that we've done that, we're ready to put the shooting action onto our character. Okay, let's start creating parts of our bullet. So let's go to hierarchy in our game scene. Hit Control Shift N to create a new game object. Let's rename this shot. Let's then go to sprite, our sprite sheet. Make sure it's opened. Go to bullet, your bullet that you want to use. Click and drag it onto the shot. All right, let's set the transform of shot and the bullet to zero. And let's rename the sprite sheet that we just dragged in to bullet. All right, let's add some, let's add a component or a couple components. Let's go to the inspector when you're clicked on the bullet and hit physics 2D, add rigid body. This adds some cool stuff that will help us get what we want out of our bullet. But gravity scale is not one of those we want to use on this uh, this time for this bullet. Let's add another component, Physics 2D, Circle Collider. All right, before we go any farther, let's see how our bullet matches up with our character. So let's go to Prefabs, drag in our character, and right now the bullet looks like it's as big as our character. And that just won't do. So select a bullet, go to transform in the inspector, and on, under the scale, do 0.5 for X and 0.5 for Y. Whoops. 0.5 for Y. This is a lot better size we can click and drag it down by selecting W and then selecting the yellow arrow. I think this size is going to be okay for now. The bullet's a lot smaller and a lot more manageable. But the circle collider we added, this light green circle, 
that's around the bullet. We don't want that to be bigger than the bullet because then it will register that it hit before it actually even touched the monster that it hit. In the Circle Collider and the Inspector, you can go to the radius right here and go, let's bring it down to 0.4. And that fits inside our bullet, so that's probably good right there. We're going to need to create a script now for this bullet to continually move up when it's fired. So let's right click scripts, create C sharp. Let's rename this script bullet mover. Double click it, open it up, and go. Let's delete everything in the public class and start a new. Type in void on enable parentheses brackets. And we're going to type our statement in the bracket. We want our game object, the bullet, to travel up. So we're going to type bullet dot velocity, not bullet number, bullet velocity equals transform dot up. And we're going to, we want to be able to change the speed of the tr transform dot up. So we're going to multiply it by speed. And this is a variable we just created. We need to define it now, but end that statement with a semicolon. And you'll see the two things you need to def define. The bullet game object and the speed variable that we have. So in order to get the speed variable to show up in our inspector, we need to define it as a public variable, a float. Public means that it will show up in the inspector. Float means it will be a number that it's expecting. And speed is the variable that we're using, the name of the variable. Then for the second, we're going to want public rigid body. dot 2D or rigid body 2D and bullet. And we need semicolons after these. I keep forgetting to put those in. And we should be ready to go. So let's hit save and see what we got. We gotta drag on the script onto the bullet before we can before the script can work. I just grabbed the whole script folder and tried to just drag it onto the bullet. That doesn't work. Grab the bullet mover script and drag it onto the bullet. Our speed variable shows up here and we can edit it by typing in a number. Let's put in 5. Now it's asking for bullet rigid body 2D and we can just drag the game object bullet in there and it will find the rigid body 2d on the bullet and let's delete the character out of the game scene let's create a prefab of the shot by just dragging the shot into the prefab folder and we can delete that from this hierarchy now let's hit play now we can drag these prefabs into our game scene and see how fast they travel. That might still be a little bit too slow, so you can open up the prefab, select it, and change the speed once again. Let's change it to 10. And the bullet moves a lot faster. One more thing before we go. All these shots that I've dragged in, you can see that they're populating the hierarchy view. This is going to slow down our game. After a lot of shots are fired, they're just going to keep staying in the scene and traveling up and up and up. And this is going to really make our game slower. So we're going to need to eventually create a delete scene, like a delete shot box, that once the shot hits that box, it will be deleted from the scene. And we'll show you how to do that also in an upcoming video.
Hey, welcome back. We hope you enjoyed this video where we showed you how to make the movement for the bullet. And in a future video, we'll show you how to make the main character shoot the bullet. So once we get the second video out for this shoot function, we're going to add an attachment right here, a link to like right here in the center, a link to that attachment so that you can go right to that video and learn the rest of the shoot function for a doodle jump character. We're going to have an animation on it. And so it actually looks like he's shooting the bullet and it's going to be really cool. So please follow along and keep watching. Thanks for watching.